Welcome to Tonic and this overview of the Tonic workflow. First off, what is Tonic? Tonic is a platform that allows you to generate safe, secure, de-identified versions of your own data. Why use Tonic? One common use case for Tonic-generated data is software testing. Effective testing requires realistic data. Tonic-generated data replicates the shape of your original data, providing the same tables, columns, and data types, but uses realistic de-identification and synthesis to protect personal and other sensitive information. You can also use Tonic-generated data to populate development and staging environments and to ensure compliance with data privacy regulations. This video guides you through the basic Tonic workflow. At a high level, to transform your original data into realistic de-identified data, you need to connect to your data, analyze the sensitivity of your data, configure the data transformation, and generate de-identified data based on that configuration. Let's start with the first step, connecting to your data. Tonic configuration and generation occurs in the context of a Tonic workspace. You can create different workspaces to work with different types and sets of data. When you first set up your workspace, you tell Tonic about your data. First, what type of database are you using? Tonic supports several traditional databases, data warehouses, and Spark-based data solutions. Next, where is your source data? You need to provide connection details so that Tonic can locate, analyze, and transform your data. Lastly, where does Tonic put the data that it generates? Here, you provide the connection details for the destination database that Tonic writes the generated data to. After you set up the connections, the next step is to identify sensitive data that needs to be transformed. Tonic automatically scans your source data for sensitive information such as names, email addresses, and other identifiers. This initial scan marks columns that contain sensitive information. You can also override the scan results to mark a column as sensitive or not sensitive. Tonic's Privacy Hub shows the sensitivity and protection status for all of the columns in your source data. The At Risk Columns panel identifies source data columns that contain sensitive information and that are not yet configured to be transformed in the destination data. Protected columns are columns that are configured to be transformed in the destination data. Not sensitive columns are not transformed and are not flagged as containing sensitive information. As you configure your data transformations, your goal is for all of the columns to either be protected or not sensitive. That takes us to the next step, configuration. The configuration step tells Tonic how to perform the transformation. Configuration includes how to transform columns, how to populate records in destination tables, and whether to generate a smaller subset of data. Configuration at the column level includes selecting which generator to apply. The generator determines how to complete the transformation for that column. For example, a generator might scramble letters, shift timestamp values, or create new values. You can configure a column from one of the following locations. In the Privacy Hub, each block represents a column and provides access to the column configuration. The database view gives us access to every table in the database as well as each of the columns. Here, we can select the generator type and configure a particular column. The table view is limited to one table at a time. Here, we can click the configuration dropdown and select which generator we'd want to use on that column, a name generator in this case. Each table has an assigned table mode. Most tables use the default de-identify mode, which uses the assigned column generators to transform the data in that table. Other table mode options produce an empty table or control whether to override existing destination data. The Tonic subsetting tool provides another option to configure data generation. Specifically, subsetting allows you to generate a smaller subset of the source data. For example, you can include a random 5% of transaction records along with the related records in other tables. Or you could use a custom where clause, say, for example, transactions that occurred in the United States along with the related records in other tables. After you complete your data configuration, the next step is to generate the data. The data generation process uses the table, column, and subsetting configurations to create your destination database. Before you start the generation, you can also configure actions to occur automatically after the data generation completes. 
Post-job scripts are custom SQL scripts that run when a job is complete. For example, you might want to add test user records or export the generated data. Webhooks send HTTP post requests when a job completes, fails, or is canceled. For example, you can send a Slack update when a job is finished. When you're ready to start the generation process, click Generate Data. If nothing blocks the generation, you can start the job. The Jobs tab allows you to view the job history and track the generation and see details about a job and its results. This helps you to adjust your configurations and rerun data generation as needed to fine tune your results. To recap, Tonic allows you to generate data that looks like your original data, but is free from personally identifiable information or other sensitive data. You first connect to your source data, then you analyze the data to identify sensitive information, you configure the data generation to ensure that sensitive data is transformed. You can also limit the results to create a smaller subset of data. And finally, after you finish the configuration, you run the data generation to populate your destination database. And that concludes our brief overview of Tonic and the Tonic workflow. To learn more, check out our other videos, our blogs, or the Tonic product docs.